Hello everyone, welcome back to Singing for Instrumentalists. My name is Katie. This is about basic vocal care. It's very, very important to take care of your instrument because it is literally a part of you. You only get one. Our voices are very complex mechanisms and they are just like any muscle. They can be stretched, they can be strengthened, they can also be strained. So hopefully these vocal care tips will help and impact you in a positive way. Let's get into it. Number one is sleep cannot stress sleep enough. And I also don't wanna put stress on you because stress will also impact your vocal cords. But when you are not taking care of your body, your voice feels that direct impact. Now, I've also heard that when you're sleeping, your vocal cords are the last thing to heal on the body's register. Get enough adequate sleep so that you're in that REM cycle, sleep cycle, and your body is healing and repairing itself. So up to seven to eight hours is recommended per night. So make sure that you are getting the sleep that you need because that is very, very needed for the overall impact and health of your voice and your mental health too. Hydration, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. You hear people just harp on you to hydrate and hydrate, hydrate or dihydrate, that type of thing. It's very true. Water is very, very important to your body. I've also heard that your vocal cords, the last thing to be hydrated on your body's register are your vocal cords. So if you are not hydrated, your vocal cords could be suffering. So you wanna make sure that it has enough moisture enough access to that moisture so that your vocal cords are rubbing together and rubbing together, causing that heat and that friction, causing them to tire out and possibly cause future vocal damage or permanent vocal damage nonetheless. So just make sure that you are hydrating. I recommend not cold water because if you are drinking cold water while you're singing, it's like you've ever been in a cold pool. Oh my goodness, your muscles, they contract and they constrict. It's the same with your vocal cords. If you bathe them in cold water, your vocal cords shock for a bit and it takes a little while for them to loosen up a little bit to get warmed up again. So you have to be careful, if you're, especially if you're practicing, you're singing at a gig, make sure that the water that you have is on the warmer side. It may not be your favorite, but it's going to do your voice some favors. One thing I forgot to mention was seltzer water. So the carbonation can get stuck in your intestines and it can be very difficult to breathe when you are trying to take a deep breath for singing. That's actually happened to me before a couple of times. And then when I felt like something move in my intestine and then it moved out of the way, I'm like, oh my goodness, I can breathe again. So that's just something to be aware of. So this next one, some people will be impacted by this and other people will not be. For me, this impacts me so heavily. It's what I eat before, during, after I'm singing, it's because I do have massive food allergies that cause inflammation. For me, I have to be very careful how much sugar I intake because my body just reacts to sugar, just has such an adverse reaction to sugar. And I love sugar so much, it's so good. But I also have a gluten allergy and I am lactose intolerant. So I have to be very, very careful with that because I'm causing this unnecessary inflammation in my body, especially around my vocal tract and I want it to be nice and free. So also with dairy, especially milk, uh, chocolate as well, things like things with dairy in them, they're gonna coat your vocal cords. And I remember one person telling me a story that when she was in middle school, she had a solo to sing and then for lunch, she had some chocolate milk. And then when it came for her time to sing, she felt this big mucus snot bubble as she described it right here. Uh, when she was trying to sing, it's because dairy coats your vocal cords. You have to be very, very careful about that. So if you feel like, what's going on with me? Why can't I sing? It may be the food that you're eating. So the sugar can coat your vocal cords as well. The dairy can coat your vocal cords as well. If you have inflammation problems, food allergies, avoid those at all costs while you're practicing singing, you don't wanna cause any unnecessary strain right here. Now, caffeine, depends upon who you ask. It really does. Some people, they can drink cups and cups of coffee and they can sing without any impact whatsoever. For me, I am not that way. I'm very sensitive to caffeine. Uh, and also, uh, along with my food allergies, I'm allergic to coffee. Hmm. Yes, everyone just feels sorry for me right now. I miss you, Starbucks. But when it comes to caffeine, caffeine is a diuretic and it just sucks the moisture out of your body. But it you know, gives you that boosted 
like boosted impact and that little bit more energy that you need to get over that tiredness that you have. But just be mindful of how much you're intaking. There's uh, coffee half-lives. I don't know if you've heard of that. If you have your first cup of coffee at eight in the morning and then you have to sing maybe at six at night, make sure you're not having too much in between so that you're not sucking the life out of your vocal cords, especially when it comes to hydration. Like I said before, your voice is the last thing to hydrate on your body's register. So if you're drinking caffeine, that could just make that even drier, a more even more dry environment. So you just have to be careful. It really depends upon who you are and if you are sensitive to caffeine, but just make sure that you're hydrating, make sure you're monitoring that caffeine. If you're having problems with singing and you realize that caffeine might be the culprit, then cut back little by little and see if that has a positive impact on your singing. Talk to my students about this that have wanted to sing gigs and gigs that are two hours, three hours long. And I tell them to warm up regularly every single day if they can and making sure that they're going through a nice gentle warm-up routine before they do impactful singing or practicing and then cooling down afterwards making sure that everything is working well for them and it's preparing them for that marathon and it's just like an athlete you wouldn't expect to run a marathon tomorrow without training for it or maybe even just warming up once a week, you wouldn't run 26 miles in one sitting without doing any training, any stretching. You have to prepare yourself for that marathon. And I've had people have to sing these gigs and they didn't take care of their voice in between. And they come back to me the next week and their voice is completely fried and they can't do anything. They have to wait and rest. The only thing they can do is to rest the voice so that it can recover. Do, please, please, please do warm up regularly train your voice just like i said it is a muscle there are muscles here that can be stretched they can be strengthened or they can be strained so make sure you're stretching them and strengthening them so i recommend that you don't take antihistamines and decongestants because what that does is that also sucks the moisture out of you i know sometimes it's you're like okay what do i choose to have an okay voice or to be miserable <laughs> i understand but just make sure that you're listening to your body that may be something that could be hindering your singing if you're taking a decongestant. So maybe try not taking that decongestant and see if that has a positive impact on your singing. Like I've said before, everyone is different, but this may help you troubleshoot what the problem is. Last one, but not least, don't overuse your voice. My uh, high school choir director, he used to say, your voice only has so many miles that it can go. It can only go so far before it runs out of gas. And it's the same with your voice. I've heard stories of Celine Dion before she would sing a show or the days that she would sing shows, she would not talk at all so that she could save her voice so that she could have the most impact and do her job when she needed to call upon her voice. So just making sure that, all right, if you have a show at night, make sure that you're resting and relaxing during the day. I know that for some people that's not necessarily a reality and some people this doesn't matter the, to them at all. But for me, I know for me and my sake, that well, how my body functions, that if I'm going to be singing in the evening, I really, really make sure that I'm resting my voice during the day and I'm not overusing it. Hopefully this is something that helped. I know that there are so many other different opinions out there and research. This is, these are things that I have found to be very helpful for me, especially being in and out of ear, nose and throat specialists my whole life. <laughs> and also through different things that I've read and other voice teachers that I've talked to and other vocalists as well, as well as personal experience as a voice teacher. So please let me know that in the comment section because your opinion matters and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, don't forget to take care of yourself.